Here's Garrett Nelson explaining why he's increased his Tesla stock price target to, just check notes here, $250 per share. Yes, folks, that Garrett Nelson, the hold Lucid stock at, what were we here, $38 per share. By the way, it's currently $2.93. Continue to hold at $20.56 per share. Continue to hold at $8.31 per share. Continue to hold at $7.28 per share. And then suddenly, oh, actually, now that the stock's completely collapsed, sell at $5. Sell at $3.95. Sell at $3.26. Better late than never, Garrett. Of course, that was just a one-off, a bit of bad luck. To his credit, he has recommended twice that investors sell Fiskus stock and only once a hold more recently at 79 cents per share. Now, look, uh, I don't want to you know, kick a guy when he's down, but if a company is a total burning dumpster fire on the brink of bankruptcy and you were previously recommending investors sell, I'm kind of curious why he would have switched to a hold at 79 cents a share. <laughs> For the record, it's currently... <laughs> well, is that even real? Currently two cents per share. Over to you, Garrett. Make your case, sir. Sure. Thanks for having me. You know, while everyone was focused on the auto delivery numbers they put out yesterday, the much bigger story was on was on the energy storage side. Um, they just reported uh, energy storage deployments of 9,400 megawatt hours in the second quarter. Now, that was more than double the record high from that they reported in Q1. And so while that segment is still a small percentage of the story, it was only 8% of total revenue in Q1. Uh, the growth that they've been talking about for a long time is really starting to show up in the numbers. And so I think you know, that's a big reason why you've seen, why you saw that move in the stock yesterday and then another uh, move up here pre market uh, in the shares. So you're at 250. How much of that is uh, based on actual sales? How much of that is based on this being a robo taxi company in uh, several years from now, if you believe that that's going to be in the cards? Sure. The, the basis of the price target is 65 times our 2025 earnings estimate. Uh, but of course, if you look out beyond 2025, uh, given the earnings growth we expect, the multiple is going to be much lower. And so, you know, what Musk really succeeded at a few weeks ago at the uh, annual shareholder meeting, uh, it wasn't about issues with all the near-term headwinds with with slowing EV demand, uh, you know, declining prices, and a, a painfully slow ramp up of the Cybertruck so far. That vehicle has been in production for seven months now, and the volumes are still very, very, very low. Uh, but he really shifted the narrative more towards long-term market opportunities right. in energy storage, autonomous driving, AI, and in uh, robotics. And so I think ever since then, you've seen a lot of momentum uh, on the upside with the stock. And really, all eyes are on the robo-taxi day on August 8th, much more important than yesterday's release or the earnings release on July 23rd. A thousand percent agree that Tesla's event on the 8th of August, literally a month away as I record this, will be hugely important for the company. Whether or not investors, analysts, and talking heads in the finance media appreciate the consequences of what we see is yet to be determined. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but it sounds like the reason that Garrett updated and increased his Tesla price target was strong growth in the energy business, which admittedly most investors have been completely ignoring for years. To be fair, it was a great quarter not including the most recent quarter, this is what Tesla's energy storage deployments look like going back to Q2 2017. You can notice a trend up. However, within that trend, there's extreme volatility. And it's something that I want to flag. A single quarter does not make a trend. Case number one, Q1 2018, approximately a doubling over the previous record quarter before it halved again and took more than a year for a comparable quarter. Then we had three successive quarters of growth, then another quote-unquote collapse to about half that previous figure. A few quarters later, in excess of that figure, then a doubling, then probably getting cut by two-thirds in the following quarter. And we see plenty of ups and downs. The point here is I wouldn't read too much into a single quarter. Obviously, a new record quarter is great, but this is an extremely volatile business given the nature of Tesla's huge batteries. Sometimes a single customer taking delivery of an order could contribute to multiple double-digit percentages of all of the energy storage deployed that quarter. So if that customer doesn't take delivery this quarter because it's a gigantic order, it might bleed into next quarter, or vice versa. To be sure, 9.4 gigawatt hours of energy storage products deployed in Q2 is massive. Double Tesla's previous 
record quarter. We've seen this happen before Q1 2018. Tesla would have been lucky to be about 0.4 of a gigawatt hour. By Q4 2020, that number had tripled the record, now over 1.5. You guys can see for yourselves. We've seen roughly a 10 times increase in Tesla energy storage deployments from Q1 2018 through to Q1 2024. This quarter, approaching a 25 times increase. Just expect extreme volatility in these numbers for many quarters to come. So is your gamble that you're going to get to uh, RoboTaxi Day and you're going to see the stock fly? Or what's the, 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 I was going to say, what's the upside and what's the downside piece of it at this moment? So the upside is that they finally unveil this mass market uh, low price EV that Musk has been talking about for many years and people have been waiting for. We've been talking about this for six or seven years now. Uh, we do think they unveil it, uh, but it's going to come at a lower, at a higher price point than the $25,000, which he's implied, just given the realities of inflation since then. We think the price price point for the base models probably more likely to be in the thirty to thirty five thousand dollar range. But uh, you know, behind the scenes, they've been rumored uh, to have been working on this for a long time now, and so we actually think they're ahead of the curve, and we could see first production by the end of next year. I won't be surprised. So we'll give Garrett a pass for his price target increase. Apparently, that was on the back of strong energy growth. Although we probably could have seen this coming. Remember, Tesla's been building megapack factories and so when production starts ramping at megapack factories we're going to see mega growth in tesla's energy storage business but again keep in mind it's much better to zoom out and look at the overall trend because there will be extreme volatility quarter over quarter like i said some of these customers are ordering fuck tons hundreds of millions of dollars of this product for a single order tesla doesn't drip feed this it's either delivered to the customer or not deployed or not Dan Ives also increased his price target from a whopping $275 per share to $300 per share for Tesla stock with a new bull case of $400 per share. The rationale? We believe the Tesla demand story has made a significant turn for the positive heading into the second half of this year and apparently into 2025. I guess that was on the back of the beat of about 1% versus analyst expectations. Tesla AI story could be worth $1 trillion plus and is the most undervalued AI name in our view. Well, I definitely agree on the latter. Can Accord Genuity also raised its Tesla price target following the Q2 delivery numbers up to $254 per share, previously $222. By the way, I've got to give credit. I like to see these. The last thing you want with a price target is a round number because it's obviously bullshit. The odds of a spreadsheet evaluation model producing a price target that ends in a zero, it's a 10% chance. In other words, out of 10 figures spat out of a valuation model for a price target, one of them, statistically, in terms of probability, ends in a zero, meaning we should be seeing nine out of every 10 price targets for Tesla stock not end in a zero, ending in a double zero, as in 200, 300. That's literally a 1% chance. If we're talking about the probability that both of those numbers roll a zero out of the evaluation model as opposed to any other figure. And before you make the argument, but Stephen, they just rounded their price target. Well, then it's not their price target, is it? Why, if you're attempting to fairly value a company, would you get a figure and then change the figure that your model produced for the fair valuation to something that isn't the figure that your model produced for a fair valuation? Even ARC do this, sometimes referencing that there's a fair valuation over the next five years. I think it was like $2,605 per share, not $2,600. I know it looks nicer, but it's less accurate. Not that it's not possible, but this is the kind of thing you want to see have some faith that it's actually the product of a valuation model as opposed to sticking one's finger in the air and not yet feels like about 300 right now quote we are autonomy uber bulls but believe in its current form tesla would be best served with another fsd price reduction now i've yet to see any price target increases that reference this but it'd be nice if a few analysts were paying attention to the stuff that actually matters in the big picture musk posted this tesla gigafactory supercomputer cluster over 50 million views on this post on X. Let's check it out. Wait, hang on a sec. But can someone explain to me why would Tesla, who are, after all, just a car company, have a supercomputer cluster? Hey everyone, happy July 4th. The fireworks in the background. I'm uh, just here at the Tesla Gigafactory. Uh, we're finalizing the construction of the uh, supercomputer cluster here, which is at the South Extension. And we hopefully will have this online in a few months. Now, this is material information. A supercomputer cluster. A jive fucking 
gigantic extension to the Gigafactory in Texas to house this gigantic supercomputer cluster coming online in a few months. You know what else is happening within a few months? Autonomy Day on the 8th of August. Is there a possibility that these two things may be somewhat correlated? That Autonomy Day may have something to do with training AI? Is there a connection there? Nah, nah, Tesla's just a car company. Can someone tell me why would they be building this gigantic supercomputer cluster that they definitely don't need since they're just a car company? And as much as I like to poke the analysts, I just want to make it explicit. This shit right here matters a hundred times, literally two orders of magnitude more than Tesla's energy deployments in Q2, or their vehicle deliveries, or their margins. This is the shit that matters. That's going to unlock phenomenal value. Yet no price target increases on the back of Tesla having enough training compute to tear away with their lead, solve autonomy, begin scaling the robo-taxi opportunity, unlocking a decatrillion dollar value opportunity. This from Gary Black, quote, we have increased our Tesla stock price target to $270, which is up from $200 per share. We'll have a look at the updated forecasts in a moment. We've increased our 2024 adjusted earnings per share to $2.40 from $2.20. Our 2030 adjusted EPS is now $15, previously $12. One of the key assumptions here is a 10 times increase in gross profits on the energy business from 2023 to 2030. Seems extremely reasonable after all. We did just see a 23, 25 times increase in energy deployments in about half a decade. So just having a look here at the RoboTaxi column. Where is it? We've got Tesla vehicle deliveries and we've got energy. Uh, hmm. Seems like there's no autonomy here. Curious. Out of interest, I just went digging and found a previous version from 2021. That was prior to a three for one stock split. So divide that 811 by three, you're at roughly $270 per share previously. We're now at 251, about three years later. Interestingly, back in 2021, there was no energy business in this model. Now there is. Presumably, the energy business at that point in time wasn't worth modeling. I totally get this, by the way. It was a spec relative to automotive business. So ignoring it completely, no problems there. Where I do have a problem though is in 2024 in july 2024 ignoring the implications of autonomy the reason if successful robot taxis will dwarf the entirety of everything else in this model all of it is going to look like a rounding error and that is not hyperbole remember i said earlier three years ago ignoring energy no big deal because it was a spec compared to automotive well a couple of years from now ignoring tesla's entire automotive and energy business will be totally fine because they're dwarfed relative to autonomy. Not a hater, by the way, I am just sharing some of the changes here and my personal thoughts. Those who are ignoring robotaxis because either A, they don't think it's going to happen. I mean, fair enough, but you've got to assign A probability, right? It's not literally 0%. Surely, maybe like half a percent, one quadrillionth of a percent, but not zero. Or maybe these folks are under the impression that autonomy is just like electric windows or power steering or automatic transmissions, e.g., will be fairly quickly copied and become relatively widespread almost instantly. I don't want to be silly enough to think that, would they? I saw some discussion here on X. I'll skip to the point, somebody poking at Gary, suggesting he's not really understanding what Tesla's doing with autonomy. With that context, this, quote, every innovation in the history of the auto industry has been quickly copied by everyone in the industry. To say, quote, this time is different, are four of the most dangerous words in investing. Except, Gary, just jumping in here, when those words accurately describe reality. Now look, maybe I'll be wrong, but I strongly, more strongly than anything ever, more strongly believe that Tesla has an unassailable lead in terms of autonomy and it won't quickly be copied by others in the auto industry than anything I've ever believed in my fucking life. I'm willing to die on this hill. I have currently staked the vast majority of my net worth. All of my shares are Tesla based on the back of autonomy and this thesis. Now, I think Gary's great. Shout out to Gary, I love you. However, I think he's extremely wrong on this and he's gonna be super embarrassed in the future. Of course, I am a deluded Tesla and Elon fanboy, but Gary, this time is vastly different. Creating real world intelligence capable of seeing, perceiving, planning, and acting in the real world is not a matter of mechanical or electrical engineering. It's not something one can simply tear down and copy. It won't be copied quickly. In fact, it won't be copied, period, in terms of comparable capabilities. Tesla's going to run away with this. The data matters. No one else has the data. And for them to collect that, 
they would literally need to put a quarter of a trillion dollars of hardware on roads instantly. And there's no magic button to do that, at least as far as I'm aware. Therefore, yes, this time, actually, really, truly, genuinely, honestly, is, in fact, different. Wait, breaking news, fact check, false. I'm so sorry, guys. This is the first time I've ever made a mistake in my entire life. Ahem. Apparently, I was wrong, and I just want to correct the record here in no uncertain terms. Somebody posted this. They've actually solved how other companies could catch up to Tesla, and I thought it was worth sharing. I was completely wrong. It turns out it's actually quite simple. In fact, it only requires one step. Allow me to read. How to copy FSD in one easy step. One. Press the magic catch up to Tesla button, which instantly puts 6 million robots on roads collecting data, builds huge supercomputer cluster, clones Tesla's existing data, which I believe they've been collecting for a decade, and their AI team, some of the best and brightest in the world, and also puts Tesla out of business so they can't overtake you once you've magically caught up to them by pressing this magic button. Easy. See, look, fact check. Accurate, you just press the magic catch up to Tesla button. It's easy as fuck, bro. And this person, I don't know how they found this information out, but obviously it's true. I mean, geez, they're smart. Look at this. This is watertight reasoning here. Ready? In a second post, they declare, this is obviously the strategy all automotive companies are pursuing, which is why they have not manually taken any of the steps needed to catch up. For example, already having 6 million robots on roads, already having a supercomputer cluster, already having existing data and an AI team, world's best, and already having put Tesla out of business so they can't overtake you anyway. They obviously know there is a magic button they can press to instantly do all the things they would have needed to start 10 years ago. And that explains why they haven't taken any of the steps manually yet because they know there's that magic button. So that's, they're just waiting, which is what I'd do too if there was a magic button to press. Ah, it all makes sense now. I'm so sorry I got that wrong, guys. I, I apologize. You know, it's pretty rare when I make a mistake. So I do need to own up to it. I was completely wrong. There is in fact a magic catch up to Tesla button, which is obviously what every company that isn't Tesla is waiting to press when the time is right. One closing thought. Leave your guesses in the comments. When do you think Gary is going to have a new column in this valuation model that includes profits from Tesla Robo Taxi as in their cut of fares in their autonomous vehicles? I mean, it's obviously not going to happen today. Maybe it will. But when does that column first appear, if ever, in this model? No, but actually, this time is different. Call me crazy, but do you see any other car companies building this? A gigantic supercomputer cluster? Of course, if they were to do that, they'd kind of be putting the cart before the horse, pun intended, because before they could do this, which is a necessary step to doing what Tesla's doing, e.g. copying them with autonomy, they would first need to have the fleet of six plus million vehicles on roads collecting data and training the software. And also they'd need the AI team, but hey, let's not go there. I don't want to be too obnoxious here, but copying a seatbelt design or an automatic transmission or an electric window or a windscreen wiper or an airbag... IQ 110, no problems. Problem solved. Anyone could do that who's not below average intelligence and is somewhat capable in the material world. But in order to have a reason to be building a fuck-off gigantic supercomputer cluster, one of the largest in the world, it's not just a matter of being a relatively smart engineer. Like I said, you can't just pull something apart and go, oh, I know how they do that. Yeah, we can do that too. Let's do that as well. These two things are not the same. This is not an innovation in the automotive industry that will easily be copied again people can try to copy but the end product copy that is not happening want more content early access bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 is awesome i've been taking it daily now for more than three years it's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps it's packed full of vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus has prebiotics probiotics and adaptogens to improve gut health regularity and help your body handle stress I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? 
I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.